Hello and welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm digital media editor Warren Fry. The music you just heard is the Vancouver Fire and Rescue Honor Guard. They played bagpipes and led a march composed of dignitaries, families, and friends of the fallen on April 28th at the 2023 Day of Mourning Ceremony held at Jack Pool Plaza in downtown Vancouver. Each year, the Day of Mourning pays tribute to those who have died or been injured in the workplace, with ceremonies held across British Columbia and Canada, and featuring speeches from representatives from government, labor, family members who have lost a loved one, and workers who sustained injuries on the job. Our first clip is of BC Premier David Eby, who stressed the importance of remembering everyone involved in a workplace safety incident is more than just a statistic. Everyone who has uh, died at work or been injured at work is loved. Their sons and daughters, their parents and grandparents, those who died left behind children and partners, friends and coworkers, and the collective grief of the loved ones is felt today. You can look over here and see the names of so many people killed at work. In the memory of every fallen worker, our government will continue to be a good partner for workers across the province, making sure that we advance health and safety because the number one response to this has to be prevention. We can't rest until every single person is safe at work and returns home safely every day. Next, I have an interview with BC Federation of Labour President Suzanne Skidmore, who spoke to the importance of the Day of Mourning Ceremony and explained the BC Fed's motto of, we mourn the dead and we fight like hell for the living. It's uh, the Day of Mourning, which is an incredibly important uh, day here in British Columbia, uh, not just for folks in the labour movement. It is a day that we uh, honour and remember those who were killed or injured on the job or in the course of their uh, work and it's a it's the day we also uh, resolve to continue to fight to make work safe uh, work places safer uh, for workers so that when they go to work in the morning they leave their families and their homes that they get to come home in the same shape that they left it in and you said during your uh, during your uh, speech that you mourn the dead but fight like hell for the living maybe you could give examples of how the BC Fed does that yeah sure I mean we I mean we do a couple of things you've heard um, you heard Tracy and Angela speaking. So some of the stuff we do out of our health and safety center, uh, which is incredibly important work, is education. Uh, you know, we make sure that young people um, and adults and uh, in the line of their work have access to education around occupational health and safety rights. We go into high schools and teach students about what their right, rights are as well. Uh, but we also do really important work around you know, lobbying for legislation, improvements to the system, um, and making sure that, you know, we, we don't um, sit idle uh, and not continue to evolve and make sure that workers don't get left behind. And you specifically mentioned the two, the two the opioid crisis, how it continues and how it affects yeah. workers, so maybe you could speak to that. Sure. I mean, we know there's been some, uh, you know, shocking numbers come out around the amount of people who have been directly impacted uh, through the opioid crisis and how it the ties back to their workplace injury and often you know either going back into the workplace too soon or not being able to uh, deal with the pain and medications or potentially the mental health crisis that goes on for people i think the piece uh, that so you know we can't forget is that there is a di direct link from workplace injury uh, connected to uh, you know pain, physical pain, also psychological injury. And, uh, you know, there is a direct link to the opioid crisis and we can't ignore that. So we need to get out in front of it and make sure that we're continuing to do preventative work to make sure that folks are, uh, you know, get all the protections that they need as they're going through uh, issues that arise from workplace injury. Now you mentioned, and it doesn't get as much mention as you, you'd think, mental health as a key mm -hmm. thing. We all went through this pandemic. We're all yeah. a little affected by yeah. it in one way or the other. How, what does BC Fit do in terms of mental health advocacy? Yeah, well, we've actually been fighting really hard to uh, make sure that there is uh, presumptive coverage, but also that psychological injuries are uh, considered in the same way that physical injuries are. So you could go to work, break your arm. It's kind of cut and dry, right? It's a, you know, these are the steps that happen. This is how you heal and all of that. But uh, it is a bit more challenging when somebody has a psychological injury that happens in their workplace and they aren't treated the same. And so we've been pushing really hard, uh, both at the WCB and in the government, to make sure uh, you know that we are doing the work to get there to treat these injuries as they are injuries in the workplace and make sure people have access to uh, the service, services and supports that they need to deal with those issues as they come up. Next, you'll hear from WorkSafe CEO Ann Nasser, who pledged the organization's continued dedication to keeping BC workers safe. I have the privilege to lead an organization that works hard every day to protect workers from health and safety risks in workplaces 
and to rehabilitate and care for them when they're injured despite those efforts. We understand the devastation a workplace death and injury can cause. Last year, 181 workers died as a result of their work. I can tell you, our employees see the effects of unsafe workplaces every single day. So today, it is important to hear from me that we will continue in our efforts to protect workers and to help employers meet their obligations in all areas of our operation. Journal of Commerce staff writer Evan Saunders spoke with Rob Ashton, the president of International Longshore and Warehouse Union Canada, about increasing penalties when a company is found to be at fault for workplace death or injury. If I could just ask you, and I know it sounds maybe like a silly question, something you've answered a million times, but day of mourning, what's it mean for you? What's it mean for your guys' day? The day of mourning for the ILW Canada, uh, it's, a, it's a solemn day for us. It's a day that we remember our dead. Uh, it's a day that we recommit to make our job safer so no more lives are lost. Um, everybody should be going home at, from work at the end of the day. And they shouldn't be working in. They shouldn't be working in materials that'll kill them without the proper safety equipment. How long have you guys been bringing out this kind of turnout for these events in order to raise awareness? We've been bringing out uh, large groups like this of about a hundred people before COVID. So <laughs> we go back then, probably about seven years now, six seven years. Uh, we got the idea from uh, one of our business agents, one of our locals who decided it was time to make a statement, uh, time to tell our employers we're tired of burying our workers, our, our family, and this is how we're going to do it. I have to say I'm not an expert on longshore work. Um, what's what's the safety like? Is it is it a particularly dangerous trade? Longshore, <clears throat> so we represent longshore workers, we represent seafarers, mm -hmm. we represent recycling people. Okay. And every single one of those jobs that we represent workers in, and in the Port Authority as well, across BC, are incredibly dangerous. Uh, every job has its different danger. Uh, seafaring, uh, the tugboats are under undermanned. They don't have enough crew people. Uh, they have under underweight tugs towing too big of barges. The tugs don't get inspected for 50 years, and that's what happened in the Ingenica, and that's where we lost Charlie Craig and Troy Pierce. Uh, in longshoring, we have an incredibly shifting workplace where you blink an eye, you turn your head the wrong way, you can get crushed, you can fall into the hold of a ship. Without our safety committees, there'd be a lot more placards up. Mm -hmm. There's so much to be done, of course, and the work seemingly never-ending What's the focus right now in terms of safety for you guys? What are you pushing for this year? Our union has been pushing in the past and can continue to do so to make sure that employers that kill their workers go to jail. Uh, too often we see government government uh, lawyers cutting deals with employers in the background for what amounts to pennies on the dollar. These employers that kill our people have to go to jail for a very long time. It's no different than somebody walking into a room, pulling out a gun and shooting somebody in the head. That's what happens in our job sites. They should end up in prison for a very long time. And then it'll stop. Every level of government has a role to play in this. And it's not just one party or that party. Every single party in our political system, from municipal all the way up to the feds, is at fault with this. Because people die under every different type of government we have. And it's every single one of those governments that should be held accountable. Whether you're a conservative, a liberal, or an NDP, or, you need to be held accountable. And you better start prosecuting. Finally, I spoke with Suzanne Perfect, the Senior Manager of Prevention Field Services of WorkSafe BC. Well, today we reflect on the workers whose lives, whose families' lives, co-workers' lives were changed forever. Uh, workers that went to work and never came home. So we share our condolences with their families and all of their acquaintances. Um, today is really a reminder as well of uh, the things that employers need to do in terms of the requirements, the rules, the regulations, in terms of the training and everything else that workers need in terms of understanding what might hurt them at work, uh, 
uh, the hazards, the risk assessments and the controls that need to be in place so that they can go to work and come home safely. And lastly, the cultures. WorkSafe is very focused on ensuring that employers develop and nurture the right occupational health and safety culture so that workers can raise their hands, ask questions, be engaged in the risk assessment process. And in essence, all of our programs are related to some of the key areas that we know we have ongoing concern, be that in construction, in general construction, where we've seen quite a number of fatalities in the past year. Of the 181 fatalities, uh, 48 were in general construction. In forestry, in manufacturing, in the marine sector, there are some of the major sectors where we know that through our ongoing review of data that we continue to have concerns. So again, we are focused on engaging with workers and employers and helping them to understand how risk assessment works and what they need to do to create that culture where uh, there's a lot of good discussion around those types of things. Uh, one of the things that was raised recently in the general population is that the opioid crisis continues. I assume that's one of the things we're focusing on. Has it gotten any better in the construction sense? Because I know one of the higher uh, populations was men in their like 30s to 50s uh, in the construction industry and trades generally who were being affected by the opioid crisis. It's one of the areas that's considered uh, within the organization um, and employers uh, having proper policies and procedures to look after those types of concerns early. And what about uh, asbestos always gets raised well, again at this ceremony uh, because it is one of, the, one of, if not the killer. It, what's, what's, is there any progress on that front as well? It is. You're very right. Um, this year, later on this year, there will be more information around licensing and certification. Uh, and we're working with our government around Bill 5. You'll hear lots more about that. But again, the key is to recognize when that hazard exists, to put in the proper uh, procedures and the proper uh, Again, if, if, if working with it can be eliminated according to the uh, different levels of control, uh, appropriate PPE being the last line of defense, we all know that that risk exists. Today, we know that 61 people died last year. So if we put the controls in place, we'll reduce that uh, number in the future, hopefully eliminate it. Uh, and last year, I attended a uh, conference where somebody from work at UC, he had been working on uh, sort of the, this shift in plans and shift in focuses. Well, not, fall protection was a big part of it. There were other pillars, for lack of a better term, to it. So how, how is that uh, sort of initiative going? It's going extremely well. Um, those are key risk areas where we know through our data mm -hmm. that we know that we have problems. Example, in construction, we know that uh, struck by injuries continue to plague us uh, through industrial equipment, collisions with industrial equipment. So again, we know that these areas we have to target. So that's exactly what our prevention team is focused on when we conduct our land inspections. Uh, drawing attention to things like mobile equipment, struck by uh, ladder usage, falls from heights. Uh, those are all key things that we need employers to focus on and put in, uh, again, appropriate risk assessment and put in appropriate procedures and policies so that those things are avoided. And obviously employers have to focus on this. What can employees focus on? Because they have to be advocates for themselves as well, obviously. Absolutely. Um, again, they have rights. All workers have rights. They have the right to, again, to know, to participate, again, to be engaged in these discussions around hazards and risks, and, and again, to the right to refuse work. So again, raising awareness around worker rights, um, having employers engage workers in these discussions. Uh, if there are joint committees established, those committees, are they functioning well? And that's something we're taking a look at as well to make sure that workers' voices are heard. And finally, uh, WorkSafe BC has a plethora of resources. Where should people go to, to look at these resources? And I know anybody, employer or employee, can access them. Our website is a phenomenal uh, source of those resources. Um, I actually focus on risk management basics. There's a whole section uh, that's a new section, and there's some new safety planning materials there for workers and for employers, uh, translated into seven, several different languages as well. So again, those are resources that all workers can access at any time. You can listen to the Construction Record podcast on Amazon, Apple, and Spotify, as well as on the daily commercial news and journal of commerce websites. Thanks for listening.